Good morning, children, and welcome back to the lecture two of Unit Two, Practical Industry Analysis. In the previous lectures, we have studied about the general concepts related to the environment, the importance of environment, scanning, what is the significance, how it goes on, various concepts like e top, sword, doors, and uh, various other concepts. Moving on to the second topic of the unit is the industry analysis. Before going to the industry analysis, it is very vital for us to understand what actually the industry is. So as you can see that. Industry is a group of firm. It is a group of firm that have a similar kind of product or services, such as uh, financial services or maybe soft drinks or maybe dealing into some specific kind of products. So these collaborating, they are called as industry. So here we we'll study that what is an industry analysis and what are the things that are moving with the uh, industry analysis and what is important in an industry analysis, how these strategists design their strategy by analyzing an industry by doing different kinds of analysis, soft analysis and toss matrix for their industry. They design these strategy depending upon the current environmental threats and so on. So when we talk about the conceptual because organization we know that they are an open system. There are a number of factors, there are a number of environmental factors that influence them continuously. So it is up to the managers, it is up to the strategists, it is up to the people who are organizers, who are basically the managers and their caretakers of the company to ensure that the influence that is coming from the environment is harnessed in a very positive way and that would drive to the achievement of the goal, collaborating with the individual goal, departmental goal and overall organizational goal. Similarly, but here, the one thing that is of problem nature is that if there are a vast number of factors that are affecting, there are a large number of external influences that are influencing the company. So, it is required that these positive things need to be filtered out and managers has to find out the most better ways to analyze and respond to the environmental conditions. Like from the environment, they extract the important factors that may influence their uh, organization both in plus and minus ways. So they have to take care, they have to harness the positive opportunities of the environment and they have to pre uh, prepare a different strategy for the negative influences from the environment. That means you are keeping a pace with the environments. So there is one uh, useful way out to focus on the most important ones like uh, there are crucial constituencies of an organization that affect the structure of the organization. So uh, various stakeholders are suppliers, competitors and the buyers. So from, we all know that the firms are there to make profit. It must create value. If the company is not creating a value, it is not adding value to the society, it is not generating the profit, then there are no possible ways that the company can survive in the competitive environment. Plus it should also give very fair prices and very good product to the customers or the buyers. So this is the uh, chart that has been depicted over here, that is industrial environment of the firm. You can see from the uh, graph over here, you can see the picture that the industrial environment is, uh, are the uh, supplier, competitors and buyers. They affect the company, they take the information and the international environment that is at the global front and there are certain environmental factors like legal environment, technological environment, natural environment economic environment, social and cultural environments and political environment that continuously affect the company. We have already dealt with these uh, topics, different kind of environment, external environment in the previous lectures. Moving on to the third slide, what is industry analysis? As you can see the slides that industry analysis helps a firm to find answers to basically two questions. First, what category of industry important? That means number one, why Number two, it says that why companies are moving on, how companies are beating the competition. So answer to the first question traces industry characteristics that affect incumbent firms, that are the firms that contribute to average profitability of the company. When managers are following particular strategy that exploits the opportunities for the industry and they pose in a better a uh, better way uh, for the company's performance and they outcast the negative impacts of the company. Thus, firms performs better 
than the other rivals. That is the reason why one company is heading towards growth and the other company is reducing the options uh, given by the other company. So in addition to these two factors, industry characteristics, the firm specific strategy, the average returns enjoyed by the firm is also dependent on the legal environment that is on the government. Because government keep on uh, enacting the, uh, kept on enacting the uh, orders, kept on enacting new statutes in order to govern, in order to regulate the competition. There are certain characteristics that could to impact the first performance. There are certain factors, there are certain uh, characteristics of an industry that continuously impact the firm performance. So there are 12 uh, points reached out. The first is the rate of demand growth. At what level, at what percentage there is the demand being raised by the external market. And because demand and what are you giving in supply, what is the balance of demand and supply is very far affecting the growth of a company. Number two, the extent of product differentiation. How much you going for the product differentiation? What kind of a uh, variability? What kind of variance you are giving in your product? What kind of a novice ideas you are giving in the niche market? How you are prevailing yourself in the market? Third, the price behavior of leading firms. If you have quoted a price of a particular brand of a particular product, what kind of a competitive price the other companies within the same industries are quoting? So you have to keep at pace. You should not be very high. You should not be even at loss. You have to sustain that competitive market. Fourth, the minimum efficient scale of production. The production should go on, but that should not be in excess that you are stocking and the product is getting outdated. Buyer switching cost. How much switching cost you are expecting a buyer would get by the, the profit he will get by if he's switching from one brand or one product to the other brand product. Next, demand side that is the economies of the scale, the balance between the demand and supply. Next, specificity of plants and equipment in industry. How much specific the equipments and the plants you are using in industry for the production? The number of firms in a particular industry. The industry is having what is like we are talking about the leather industry. So there are how many companies that are uh, making a proper competition in for the each other in the periphery. So you have to deal with that competition also. That means the company has to keep on surviving with these kind of factors also. The level and pattern of promotional expenditures, the rate and nature of what is the technological competition, what is the size of the firm and the consumer preferences for the products and for the related. So in the said reference, Michael Porter gave up a model. He said that the nature and degree of competition in a particular industry depends on the five forces. This model is also called as Porter's five free forces model. The threat of new entrants, second, the powerful uh, suppliers, powerful buyers, substitute products, jockeying for possession. That means establish a strategic agenda for dealing with these competing currents and to grow despite them company must understand how they operate in an industry and how they affect the company in its particular situations. Porter said that the threats of an ent new entrance, there are certain threats of threats of entry, that means new entrances are coming in the market. Obviously, that is a threat for the company, that is a threat for the product the company is manufacturing. The first is the economies of Second is the capital requirement. Third is switching cost. The last slide we have Next is the access to the distribution channels. Access to the distribution channel, cost advantage that is independent of the SMEs, and last government. factors that uh, uh, they are the possible barriers, you can understand them as a barriers that 
are for the entry for a new product in a company in that industry. Number two is the rivalry among the existing firms. Rivalry among the that when there are companies operating in a similar industry they are competing among themselves they are fighting they're fighting for prices they're fighting for the offer they're fighting for the discount they're fighting for uh, attract the uh, attracting the customers so there's a rivalry so there are number so there are certain uh, according to quarter intense rivalry is related to, to the presence of the various uh, factors like number of competitors the rate of industry growth, product or uh, service characteristics, amount of fixed costs, apart from that capacity, height of exit barriers and the diversity of the drivers. When there is a threat for the substitute product or the services, that means company coming up, there are certain companies they are coming with the substitute products at the low price. So there is always a chance for a customer to switch to the uh, substitute product instead of the original because they cannot afford this cost. That are higher in a branches company, so there is a scope for these substitute companies, the substitute products to merge into the market and track or trace or take the major customer percentage from the uh, parent company or maybe from the main company. So there is a bargaining power of the uh, buyer. So the buyer buyer purchases large proportion of the seller's product or services like oil filters by major water market. A buyer also has a potential to integrate backward by producing the uh, product itself. Apart from that, there are alternated suppliers as plentiful because the product is standard or undifferentiated. Then changing super supplier cost. To a little extent, the purchased product uh, represents a high percentage of buyer cost. A buyer earns low profit, is thus uh, very sensitive uh, to the cost and service differences. Lastly, the purchased product, the product that is being purchased, is unimportant to the final quality or price of the buyer. So, the bargaining power of suppliers or the relative power of the other stakeholders. So, there are various factors that affect. According to the portal, if you go back to the, uh, if you go to the diagram suggested by the portal, so you see there are four uh, basically barriers and threats of new entrants. We have discussed the bargaining power of buyers, the threat of substitute products, bargaining power of suppliers. So when you talk about the threat of new entry, so there are barriers for entry, economies of scale, the brand loyalty, capital requirement, cumulative experience government policies, access to distribution channels and the switching costs as we have just discussed over here. When you talk about the rivalry among the existing competitors, so there are a number of competitors, the diversity of the competitors, industry concentration, industry growth, quality differences, brand loyalty, barriers to exit and the, again the switching cost is similar to that of the threat of new entrants. When you talk about the bargaining power of the suppliers that keep on affecting the uh, company with respect to the Porto's moil as the number and size of supply suppliers, uniqueness of each supplier product, what kind of a unique product the supplier is offering to the company, focal company's ability to substitute, then bargaining power of the buyers. Bargaining power of buyers will talk about the number of customers, there is one of the factor number of customers, size of each customer order, whether he is giving a bulk order, whether he is giving a limited order, whether he is a regular customer or whether he is uh, coming in just because he is not getting his brand in a different company. Price sensitivity, what is the difference between the competitors, buyer's ability to substitute, buyer's information availability and again the switching cost. Then threat of substitute product. Number of substitute products in the market available, buyer's propensity to substitute, relative price, performance of the substitute. If the substitute is doing well in comparison to the original product, then buy customer is going to keep on going the, with the new product, uh, the old product. He will definitely switch to the uh, substitute product because it is at low cost and is giving a better quality in comparison to the previous product that he was using. Perceived level of product differentiation and again the switching cost. So industry analysis is very helpful. 
because it helps to assess the relative strength and weakness of the company it also uh, helps to analyze the opportunity and threats in the environment so that the managers can harness the uh, opportunities uh, and strength utilizing the strength as if you remember that maxi maxi approach in the last lecture so through industry analysis the organization is in a capability of its ability to find whether the field that he has chosen is very very attractive or he also accesses more strength and weaknesses in the industry where that company is standing in an industry so industry analysis uh, helps the company in basically two ways firstly industry attractiveness and competitive position so industry attractiveness that the first the company tries to find out that where at what point at what ratio at what profit the company is holding a place in an industry what is the position of an industry with respect to the other competitors within the same industry similarly competitive position what is the competitive position of a company what is the uh, competitive position of a company how far the company is able to survive the competition the demands of the customer the changing environment and influences the internal turbulence of the company yet maintaining the competitive strength by using the various strengths and eliminating or defend being defending against the weaknesses so this is an example of a software education training industry so we have seen that it is a industry as a framework how analyze this industry first the basic feature of the industry what is the basic feature of a software industry what is the environment that affect this kind of an industry what are the structural features of the industry industry attractiveness how far the industry is attractive for the customers or maybe for the other stakeholders how industry performing in comparison to the other industry that what is the growth rate with respect to the economies of scale whether it's meeting the demand and supply ratio or not what are the various industry practices and what is the future scenario that is the scope of this software education and training industry so this is the way you do the uh, industry analysis then uh, we'll talk about the strategic groups that what are the various kind of strategic groups and what are the various strategic types that are being used by the company how many types of uh, company uh, there are different kinds of a company that use different strategies so the strategic group is a set of business units or firms that pursue similar strategies with similar resources that is a group of company they have a similar uh, strategies to follow and they have a similar resources since they have a similar resources they follow the same strategy so we are categorizing the firm in one industry into set of strategic group so in a particular industry there are certain companies we group certain kind of companies in a one strategic group that are can be utilized by the strategic management so as to understand the competitive environment of that particular group of company in that particular strategic group because See the example of your McDonald's and Olive Garden are a part of the same restaurant industry, but have different mission, objectives, and strategy. Thus, belong to different strategic group. So, McDonald's and Olive both are the restaurant chain. They have they belong to the hotel or the restaurant industry, but they differ in aspect that their missions, objectives, and strategies are different because they follow the different strategic group. We come to the strategic group in the coming up slides. Similarly, Burger King and Hardy. they also have a lot of thing in common with mcdonald's in terms of the similar strategy of producing high volume of low price meal but they are very strong rivals and they are organized to operate in a similar fashion so burger and hardy they are a very giving a tough competition to mcdonald's and the uh, both of them because they have are uh, both of them are equipped with providing the uh, meal at the low cost and a different kind of variety So a strategic type is a category of firm based on common strategic orientation and a combination of strategic culture and position consisting with that uh, strategy. So if you try to understand what is the strategic type, it is the listing of firms. It's a category of firms that are based that are influenced yeah that are in common strategic orientation being the focal points and the combination of the structure, culture, and processes consistent with that. strategy so according to miles and snow competing firms in a single industry can be categorized miles and snow categorizes the industry into four types 
the first being the defenders, the second being the prospectors, the third being the analyzers and the fourth being the reactors. So the first, if you come, that uh, the first is uh, defenders. So defenders coming from the word defend, that means they're defensive against everything. So they have a very limited product line. Their product lines are very limited that focus on improving the efficiency of the existing operations. They're not going into the diversified products. Thus, cost orientations make them unlikely to renewable the new area because they are very conservative, they are very defensive in their orientation, they have a limited product line and their whole focus is on to improve the current situation rather than indulging themselves into various product lines. Second is the prospectors. These are the companies with fairly broad product lines. They have many products that focus on products. So continuously R&D is coming up. So they always try to come up with new uh, products. They are more indulged to innovation and exploring the market opportunities. So this sale orientation makes them very efficient because they are not dealing into single product line. So they tend to emphasize on the creativity. That is they are coming for the innovation. Over efficiency example like PepsiCo shotgun approach. PepsiCo has a shotgun approach. Ready, fire, and aim. Third is the analyzers. These are the companies that operate in at least two product market. That is one is stable and the other product market is unstable. So stable areas they emphasize efficiency. Where they are stable, they are more focusing on the efficiency of their work, the efficiency of the manufacturing system, the efficiency of their policies. Whereas in a variable innovation, that is like Procter and Gamble, that is ready, aim, and fire. So PNG is one of the example of the analyzers. Last is the reactors. They lack a very consistent strategy, structure, culture, relationship. In effect, general responses to environmental pressure tend to a piecemeal strategy changes so they basically react when things happen they are not they are very weak in structure culture relationship they are uh, they have a very uh, they give a very ineffective response in comparison to the environmental threats and environmental pressures and they are doing just bare minimum in a industry they are the reactors so four strategic types are defenders prospectors analyzers and reactors with different traits of their own so this is one other word that pops in is the um, hyper competition. So hyper competition describes an industry undergoing ever increasing level of environmental uncertainty in which competitive life is only temporary. That means there is an excess amount of competition. So this kind of an industry is always going into changes. There's always environmental threats, environmental turbulences. Like if you talk about the software industry, you started one software and another two three days after. A new software came up. So, how to pace up? How things are going to be uh, categorized? How things are going to be handled in such kind of a market? So, there's a lot of competitive advantage, a lot of uh, competition in these kinds of industry, like multi-domestic industries, for example, home appliances that are globally renowned and globally known. So in hyper competition industries such as like I gave example of computers, competitive advantage comes from up to date knowledge. Daily you see when you are working on your laptop, you see that new updates come up and how far you can pace up. If you are not pacing up then there will be a problem in your computer, there will be a problem in your hardware. So this industry is always changing, there is always an environmental turbulence and it is a need of an art that the people, the software and the experts in this area has to keep themselves updated in order to sustain the competition. This is many uh, good word that is competitive intelligence. You have heard about the human intelligence, you have heard about the spiritual intelligence, you have heard about the emotional intelligence, but what is competitive intelligence? Competitive intelligence is also called as business intelligence and it is a very fastest growing concept in the field of strategy management that means the strategic the managers and the whole soul owners of the company are relying more on the competitive intelligence it is a very uh, devised formal program in order to get the information on the competitors of the company that means this process works in order to get the information about the competitors so that information can be utilized and accordingly the strategies can be designed for example at general mills all employees are trained to recognize and tap sources of the competitive and famished. So there is a proper training program that trains the employee in order to get the information and to filter the right information from the environment so that they are suiting it to their needs and then they are devising their strategies accordingly. So competitive intelligence is the activity of monitoring the environment. You are continuously monitoring the environment external 
that is external to the firm for the information so that you can extract the relevant information that can help in the decision making process for the company so main objective behind the ci is not to uh, copy the uh, secrets of the competition or maybe the competitors or maybe steal their ideas or just to follow in a very systematic manner and to take the information collect the information relate it analyze it and give them the basic understanding of the competitor structure policies culture behavior capabilities and weaknesses so accordingly they can design their strategy they are studying the other industry they are studying the other companies within the same industry so it is very important for any organization any firm to really excel in competitive intelligence to keep their network open in order to sustain at the global front and order to sustain at the local front so there are various sources from where do managers get the information so there are two sources primary sources and the secondary sources like primary sources the former and present employees the current employees or the ex employees who have left the organization vendors and suppliers also keep on giving you the information about the competitors because they are also the vendor and supplier for that particular company dealer network what kind of dealer chain they are following you get information from your dealers your customers your reporters your investment analysts trade shows and conferences because whenever the trade and show or conferences being organized every uh, competitor tries to come because there you get a glimpse of what the other companies and the other industries are doing and why they are doing better what new thing you are coming up in the market where then there's a news group what are the second resources second resources are already the published material like the annual reports press releases local newspaper trade magazines analyst report companies newsletter online databases academic paper and journals government agencies and publications the goals of competitive intelligence obviously are to detect and analyze the competitor strength to analyze where they are weak what are the opportunities and threats they are structuring from the environment and thus they tend to enhance their competitive advantages by studying and analyzing the competition and they improve their positioning their method of operations and the performance of their company so there are certain benefits of competitive intelligence like it boosts the company profitability it maximizes the opportunities for the company it also protects the company against external threats and it also projects the external threat it optimizes the operations and performance benchmarking that means it makes the optimum utilization of the resources it helps in knowledge management it also protects the intellectual property insights it gives information about the merger and acquisition it also helps in making the strategic decision in the favor of the company competitive intelligence can be applied at various places like profiling competitors benchmarking product process and performances technology assessment environmental scanning due diligence for corporate acquisition market position with respect to the competitors so these are the areas where competitive intelligence is being utilized and harnessed by the strategists in a company so this is the model given by james boron and david krebs because he said that there are certain factors that uh, due to which the competitive intelligence, uh, intelligence is a success in a company so like the first is the organization culture and the structure how the organization is structured what kind of a structure the company is following what is the strategy organization following it we have already said the four different kind of strategic groups what is the production technology they are using that is an outdated or is it an updated or is it an outcast technology what is external environment do they are scared of how the external environment is affecting the company and how far they are devising a strategy to fight back and the workforce there what kind of blend what kind of a talent mix do they have this is the ci process that is competent is very simple they analyze the need of competent like first of all they analyze why competitive intelligence is important if at all they are training the employees in the competitive intelligence then what is the need what they want to get information about how they want to utilize that information so first the need should be generated to analyze the uh, competition uh, market or maybe the industry they are maybe the company they are at competing in competition web second the information gathering they gather the information relevant to them from the external they filter out the important and they tend to organize their facts that are important for them or that they think that that would be important Third, they analyze the data. 
data that they have got from the information from the various sources like crime resources and the secondary sources. They have to analyze it, make it into a workable uh, points, a workable facts. Then they tend to disseminate the intelligence. They tend to uh, forward the information in an organized way to the strategists, or maybe to the upper level. And finally, they use this intelligence for devising various strategies, processes, improving over their weaknesses, studying the competitors, devising their new products, and many more ways. So there are certain reasons uh, why competitive intelligence fails. So the causes are lack of operational efficiency. Processes that you have designed are you not able to collect or gather, you are not able to analyze the right information from the environment. Lack of intelligence network, people involved in the competent intelligence are not well equipped or trained or are not having the conceptual clarity. Lack of training, lack of education and lack of perceived value. Symptoms are like bureaucratic red tableism and inefficient communication, lack of intelligence effective symptoms are adverse behavior of the personnel, inoperative selection of the vendors, time mismanagement, impractical deadlines, unfocused and ill-defined uh, competitive intelligence needs and last part, the managers are not able to do the competitive intelligence with the company, they are inefficient. So with this we come to an end of lecture 2. For any doubts, you can always get back to me and uh, let's give a quick recap what we have started so far. So we started with what is the concept of industry, why industry analysis is important. We moved to, to the Porter mo uh, model for uh, more detailed analysis in order to study the degree of competition in an industry and the various factors that are affecting that enhances the rivalry among the existing. Then we started the usefulness of the industry analysis. We also started the software education industry as a pattern for analyzing the industry by taking software industry as an example. We also got through the strategic tools which here we started that there are four kinds of strategic group, defender, prospector, analyzers and reactors. We also started the hyper competition that is always turbulent an external environment affecting the company like hardware and computers. We also started the competitive intelligence, sources, goals, benefits, applications, models of competitive intelligence and the CI process and also the failures. Now you can get the question about the competitive intelligence, the method, the sources and what are the failures and what are the causes or the symptoms of the intelligence. With this we come to an end. After the quick recap, we also done the recap. So uh, keep on revising. We will meet you soon in a lecture number 3. Thank you.